Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Ellen Cameron from the School of Economics and UCC. I'm joined here by my colleague, um, Dr. Asanto Kay. She told you about our new program, which we developed actually in economics. And um, if you look at the title here of our chapter, it's Developing Self in Economics, the Role of Developmental Space in an Integrational Graduate Educational Program. And so really what we're all about here is trying to develop an integrated program which integrates both self-development and scholarly development. That's what we want to do in the program. And we, the question for us really was how to do this. So hence the importance here of the concept of development, developmental space and how we actually develop this within the programme and use it within the programme to try to integrate both self-development and scholarly development there together. It's an issue by the School of Economics. It's, we've been developing this over the last number of years, and it's culminated then in the creation of a new programme, the BA in Economics through Transformational Learning, which I've been selling all morning over at the open day to the 7,000 students that showed up, which has been a great turnout. So we're very pleased with that, and we got a lot of interest actually in the programme. So um, just to give you some idea about the structure of our presentation actually today, and um, we're going to see how much we can get through. We're talking about a whole program, so it's actually quite extensive. So we'll see what we can actually get through in this, this fourth hour here. So I want to introduce you then to the program first of all, and explain to you why we think we needed a program actually like this. What was the rationale actually for this program, why we needed it? And the second thing then is in terms of the theoretical perspectives behind the program. It's very hard to go right into and start to discuss the kind of concrete details about the program without understanding what was actually driving it. So where did all the ideas really come from for this concept of developmental space? And um, Assumpt will talk actually to you very much about that. And then we, we said we're going to looking at, well, how do we put this into operation? How do we put this program design into practice? And um, if we get time, we'll illustrate this with an example of a particular module that I teach myself actually in third year, the Wealth and Poverty of Nations. And then finally, then come up with some of the kind of questions we actually have in relation to this for the future. We really welcome any feedback you'd actually have or any comments you'd have on a program like this. So where we're coming from is really, we're talking about economics graduates. They have to go out really into the world of work and they've got to get a job afterwards or at least progress actually into other postgraduate studies. So we were very much influenced by this um, quote here by Peter Drucker and um, our head of department, the professor of economics, Colin Fanning, is very much interested actually in Peter Drucker's work and actually posed a challenge to us then to actually develop a new program, a new format actually for an economics program in the school. So if you read this actually quote, it gives a good sense of where Peter Drucker sees um, the, the whole employment actually of graduates in the future and the demands are being actually placed on workers actually in the future. So companies today aren't just managing their employees Employees' careers, knowledge workers must effectively be their own chief executive officers. So it's up to you to carve out your place, to know when to change course, and to keep yourself engaged in productive over work life that may span some 50 years. We're all aware of this actually, university, but for an undergraduate student, that's a very, very big demand actually for them. To do things well, you need to cultivate a deep understanding of yourself, not only what your strengths and your weaknesses are, but and also where you can make the biggest contribution. Because only when you operate from your strengths can you make the biggest contribution. I mean, that's a really challenge, actually, for education and education, actually, in university in the future. And we were trying to really address this particular challenge. So if we, in developing the program, we did a lot of background and research. So we wanted, obviously, to integrate self-development with scholarly development. So it is an economics program. So we went back to look at really what um, employers actually wanted from economics graduates. And we found that they really put a lot of focus on personal development and also career management. They really wanted the graduates to be able to actually develop their own career and to be able to handle multiple tasks, these were sort of things, developing teamwork and those kind of skills. We looked at the Royal Economic Society, the UK Economics Network, where they were focusing on in their employer surveys, where the usual things for economics, applying economic knowledge, organising, presenting, problem solving, communicating economic matters to different audiences. And then we talked to our past graduates, what they were experiencing out in the world of work, and what they came up with very strongly was a need for active participation and engagement in college, that there wasn't sufficient amounts of that. And they also talked about the importance of confidence, and not actually having confidence in themselves when they actually went out into the world of work, not being able to present themselves, even at an interview basis. And also, very much from our art students, this is an arts programme. We want to actually place our graduates on a similar footing to graduates of other UCC business or finance programmes. They don't have a placement actually in this programme, they do in commerce, they do actually in finance. We have to give our graduates in arts something different, something extra, that would actually make them attractive out, out there in the world of work. So some people just come up with this point here. It's an integrated um, <laughs> <laughs> integrated. <laughs> integrated. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I suppose it's important to clarify my role in the redesign of the economics programme in that um, I 
uh, work with Dan and with Ella and with the uh, team in the School of Economics as an external person coming in. I'm not uh, employed by the university. Um, and my interest is in undergraduates, I suppose, and, and early postgraduates getting to the world of work. I'm an occupational psychologist, so a lot of my work has been with graduates um, at the recruitment point, what we would call talent identification and the development of that talent over the trajectory of their careers. So um, before I met um, the, the, the team in the School of Economics, you know, there was many, both in the UK setting as well as here, and there were many days I came out scratching my head, really disappointed with the way in which graduates were actually um, presenting themselves, communicating their messages um, as university graduates. You know, and it was um, devastating them, and I'm not putting too fine a point in it, at times when people would talk more about their part-time jobs than about their formal education in order to present themselves and market themselves for a job. So I suppose we've gotten together, we've worked on this for a number of years, it's three or four years in evolution I suppose, um, to try and ask some questions about what can we do uh, to improve the scenario of the graduate and the way they're actually thinking when they hit the world of work. So that's the context I suppose of my involvement. Um, to build on what Ella has, has um, uh, introduced to you, I suppose, the idea of Drucker's thinking about you're not just uh, developing a, a graduate in three or four years through university, you're actually developing somebody who's actually going out into a lifelong work, and God knows how long that's going to be for all of us, the way it's going these days. Um, and one of the things that uh, many employers would actually talk about, and it's kind of captured here, is the idea that you know, because we have a mobile workforce, which is quite different from the way it was in the, up to the last decade or so ago, that means different things then when employers are investing in graduates. Um, prior to this, there was the view, you know, if you identify talent, you know, we go for all the firsts and we take them and that'll be fine. And you know what, we put them on two or three year contracts and we'll see what they look like at the end of that and we can... But that day is, is, is changing rapidly because companies don't want to put that investment up front. Um, that time, they don't want to lose that time because they recognise many of those graduates are mobile and within five to seven years, the, the evidence is that many of them will have moved on. So there, there's a shift, um, and it's probably captured here in this point, that graduates are expected to compete for entry jobs. And what does that mean? That means actually understanding that when they're going into a recruitment scenario, it's, it's the Peter Drucker scenario they're actually presenting whether they're doctors or nurses or economics graduates or anything, I'd say this is right across the spectrum, that there's an understanding they're competing. So they need to put themselves across, not only as experts in their particular fields, but also as people who can make a contribution, who can work in a team, who can communicate, who can think, who can innovate, and all of those broader um, attributes that are more and more you know, being required from our graduates. So we use the word, um, you know, transfer a growth perspective, and I'll explain that as we go through, because I suppose that's what we've been trying to work on, uh, the transferability of, of a perspective, you know, a mindset, a perspective that the students will, will develop, rather than just a set of skills or a set of knowledge. And um, again, one of the comments we'd have made as a team when we started to work together, you know, to satisfy the agenda of employers, it's very easy to come and look at some of the university programmes and maybe add a... Um, a competency set, which is the, the buzzword you'd be well familiar with. Um, we'll, we'll give skills in A, B, C, D, E. Um, and indeed, many of, many of the competitors to the universities would market themselves quite publicly on that basis. But what does that give you? That gives you, yes, somebody who can get up and make a presentation, um, or somebody who can actually you know, understand the need to use Excel, or somebody who says they've worked in a team. But again, what does that do for, and again, back to integration, the combination of the self with the scholar? Does the student actually look at their audience? Do they think about who they're communicating with? Do they know their strengths in communication? Do they know how they'll expand and develop on those? It's, it's that space, and many of you have mentioned it already in everything that you've said, getting into the, to the student to engage in this and to take ownership of their own learning. So that's just a little bit about, um, sorry, I'm not sure where I go from here. Um, there was the other way. That's okay. Um, so our aim was our aim was to integrate scholarly with self-development as preparation for competitive entry, the types of themes I've been talking about, and then the longer-term participation. Um, uh, I'm very, very conscious of time. Uh, we spent probably about a year as a team looking at what do we know about transformative um, education, and um, really what do we know about it, um, in the sense of, um, you know, there were many examples shared by the team uh, where they would say, you know, 
when it, when, a stu when I'm dealing with a student and they, you know, I face resistance, you know, about what's my opinion on or where am I going on this. Um, we try to say, okay, well, you know, that is really the heart of it, this engagement of the student. So, you know, you really need to understand how the self is actually operating before you can try and impose that on the scholarly pedagogy. So we took a step back, and, and usefully, I suppose, I've got a background in psychology, so that was helpful. But others um, uh, largely contributed to our work as well. We looked at the whole area of constructive developmental psychology, the idea that we make meaning, we construct meaning in every situation that we're in. We opened up ideas around the self and what it actually means. I'm going to fly through this now, and I, I do apologise. But the whole idea of the self, which is a vast area in itself, um, we narrowed that down to, um, to the learning environment. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm slipping ahead. So we started with the self. We understood that the self is something about an energy. It's something about personality from within. We understood that learning must be understood from this perspective if we're actually going to deal with uh, transformative learning. Um, we narrowed it then into the economics agenda by actually saying we can't deal with self in the broader sense, but what we can do is try and um, uh, look at the area of self in relation to the growth of the scholarly perspective of economics. So, you know, we, we, we narrowed it to, to that point. I keep going the wrong way, don't I? Um, so our goal then, to grow a scholarly perspective, and this is where we began to introduce the employer agenda and this whole idea of attributes, broader attributes, or what we call you know, developmental growth and analysis, you know, innovation, multi-perspective, planned and communicative mindset. That, that's um, where we were going to. We came up with this idea of developmental space um, as, a, as a broad sort of concept, a broad framework um, to, to um, permeate right across the programme. Now, central to that is something we called we call the uh, transformative dialogue, which we will talk to you about afterwards, um, uh, specifically. But just some key ideas to introduce it. Firstly, we believe that adult mental development can be accelerated. It is possible to do this. You know, many people argue, because the converse of this is people evolve, they go at their own pace, and there's not a lot you can do about it. But you know, there is sufficient evidence to show that, that in a certain situation, in a certain environment, which we've called developmental space, it is possible to, to, to grow, to grow the self, you know, to grow the perspective. How do you do that? The idea of subject-object separation, Robert Keegan's work from Harvard is, and, and that again as a concept goes right back through, you know, through, through many, many wiser giants before him, but that whole idea of actually trying to make object what one is subject to. This idea that you're embedded in a perspective at a certain stage in life, and the challenge is then to try and and uh, provide an environment which draws awareness to that mindset and then allows you to, to transcend it and go beyond it. So that's a central idea um, and, and you hear it regularly from the economics team, we're trying to make an object, we're working on how you make that object with, within the, the actual uh, pedagogy and, and impl implementation in the classroom. Um, so creating the environment is absolutely huge. Key words here, and I'm just going to mention them, awareness, Lived experience, that we heard it wonderfully there, you know, disruption absolutely, you know, has been huge learning for us over the four years. What is disruption and to what extent, um, uh, you know, how do you get the balance right with disruption? Reflection, and that's where we begin to introduce the idea of the dialogue, the transformative dialogue. Feedback, again, many of you have mentioned it. And then this whole idea of ego, you know, the ego in lived experiences and feedback and self-assessment. How do you actually manage that? Um, in, the, in, in, a, in an undergraduate population. So these are key aspects um, to developmental space. Culture we're emphasising as being absolutely huge. Um, this, this needs to be supported, the challenge and support. Um, this whole idea of a consciousness bridge, starting with the students who loved your idea on first years and actually moving through. You won't start to do this in third year, but that's what we've learned. The whole engagement of the students a developmental framework, scaffolding, and how specific you are, leaving it open isn't good enough, you know, the ability to, to support that. This whole idea of, again, this is Robert's, Robert Keegan's idea of the socialised mindset where the students are at a point in time, and how you actually deal with that um, as, a, as, a, as a way um, of, of accepting where people are, but recognising the need for the I statements in, in that context. So there is a kind of a paradox and a complexity there. Uh, I'm going to hand back to you very quickly too show us the framework that we came out of in a minute.
Okay, we're just going to just show you how the program actually is worked out within in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so essentially, <coughs> don't talk there about these disruptive experiences. So first, where we start is it's a scholarly program. So there we start with transformative questions. So we set up questions for students which we think actually have particular characteristics about them, which are going to disrupt the students actually thinking. So it must be important to them, something that they actually can have made decisions about. Um, for example, in my class in Wealth and Poverty and Nation, we asked them what makes some countries rich, what, what makes some countries poor. Now that's obviously a key importance actually out there in the global economy. People actually make decisions actually on the basis of that information. The decisions they make may affect actually those people living in those countries. So it's something actually that they can reflect on that will be actually important then for them. But again, they must be kind of disruptive questions. They must not be able to answer those questions uh, at, with their current set of knowledge. You know, they must need to do something else. They must need to change their form of thinking to also answer those questions. So we start with transformative questions. So every one of the modules is actually, are actually built around this. And then we continue on the theme of disruption and performances. We actually, going back to the kind of teaching for understanding approach, that students actually must act, they must perform. It must be a lived experience, as you talked about there. So we've actually identified a number of key kind of disruptions. So things which we deal with in other classes, I appreciate things like team working, presentation skills, all these sorts of stuff. But we take them actually as being a disruptive experience, which I found my students last week found an extremely disruptive experience when they stand up and give presentations. So it is a disruption for them. They're not used to doing it. They're, they find it very difficult, very challenging. So again, we build that actually into the program. It's an opportunity again for them to develop themselves. Then uh, based around that, that is what I do reflection. So they reflect back then on their performance. How are they doing within their performance? And as well as that, they also get external feedback actually from us as facilitators actually on the program. And all of this then feeds into a transformation dialogue where we actually meet ourselves individually with the students about three times a year. And we talk them through some of their reflections. They identify goals that they want to actually achieve, what they want to improve on, they reflect back on their performances, and they actually set targets then for the future, what they can do in future performances. So that, in a nutshell, in one minute, is the actual <laughs> overall program. So we have a lot more detail actually on that in our presentation later on. Thank you very much.